Hi, my name is Steve Clapham and welcome to the latest video in our Accounting Red Flag series. I've given up counting because we're doing so many. This one's about auditors and it's the first of a series that I'm going to be doing on auditors. And um, it's very cold. I'm recording this in London on November the 5th, Guy Fox night. It's super cold and um, I'm wearing a fleece, so forgive me my casual appearance. But don't worry, the content's going to be super professional because I have three decades, would you believe, of experience analyzing companies. And if you sign up for our free newsletter on our website, BehindTheBalanceSheet.com, not only will you get lots of free training materials, lots of nice materials in the newsletter, but you also get access to our club site with a free library and loads of fun letters, loads of interesting information. And if you're really serious about improving your investing skills, why don't you have a look at our investing courses? They really are good. They're not the cheapest courses. I can promise you they're the best quality courses that you'll find anywhere. So let's get into this. And what I want to talk to you about is auditing and fraud. And the reason that I'm producing this video is we recently had the FRC produced a report on the audit of Patisserie Valerie. And I, I'm going to talk about, about, about that in a minute, but I just want to preface this by saying the auditors will tell you they aren't responsible for fraud. In fact, in the UK, auditing standards say they do have responsibility. And the distinction is one of those fine lines. But look, if you're watching this from the US, and I've got a lot of, of, of retail investing clients in, in the States, you don't need to be as worried because you've got Sarbanes-Oxley and the processes behind Sarbanes-Oxley give you, as an investor, quite a lot of protection. In Europe, however, investors are protected by, in the UK, the auditors are policed by the FRC, and I don't want to criticize the FRC, but I think they're doing a really good job. But the way the regulation is structured is they're there to sort things out afterwards. They do monitor auditors and they do test the, the, the quality of audits, but the, the audits quality standards aren't nearly met. You know, the, it's meant to be that they should achieve a certain standard, 90% of public company audits should achieve this, this standard, and they're less than 80%. But, you know, the auditors need to step up to the plate. In Germany, you got protect, you're got protected by Baffin, so good luck with that. So let's just turn to Petitory Holdings, and as I said, FRC is the UK accounting watchdog, and Grant Thornton, the auditor of Petitory Holdings, has been fined by the FRC. They were fined four million pounds, and that fine was reduced for early admission and exceptional cooperation. I have a real problem with this because I think that the, the fine, the net fine, I think it was 2.3 million if I remember correctly, it really isn't sufficient. It really isn't adequate. And the report, the FRC's report says that the auditor failed to conduct proper testing in respect of revenue, in respect of cash, in respect of fixed asset additions and expect of journal entries. And interestingly, the FRC state that the sanctions that they've introduced against the auditor, both the firm and the individual who was responsible for the audit, would have been imposed even if there hadn't been a fraud. So although the auditors tend to hide behind this thing, oh, we couldn't be responsible because it was a fraud, in fact, in this case, the audit checks were so weak that the sanctions would have been imposed even if there hadn't been a fraud. Obviously, it begs the question of whether it would have been discovered, but that's a different matter. So what did, what does the report say? The report says the auditor failed to question large voucher sales just ahead of the year-end date. In fact, three quarters of the annual revenue from vouchers from a third-party company was received in one single payment three days before the year end. That of itself is very unusual and would warrant, would 
I mean, the auditor would have been forced to do very detailed investigations into that, but they didn't. The failings in the audit of cash and bank included the failure to investigate activity and reactivated dormant accounts. They mis made a mistake. They took a 4 million overdraft facility and thought it was a 4 million overdraft, which is a, a massive omission. And they failed to properly investigate lodgements after the year end, which were recognized as cash in the year. Over 30 million over three years, which compares with the reported earnings of 41 million. So this is like super material. They didn't properly test year end accounting adjustments, these journal entries that the companies do when they do their year end closing, they put through journal entries to make sure that the books are correct for the for the final adjustments, the final fine tuning. And the auditor used in inappropriate selection criteria for that testing, resulting in entries being left untested and inconsistencies arising from the testing being unexplained. And motor vehicles were left as nil because they were incorrectly classified as planned. And other categorization errors weren't challenged. Two million of additions to assets weren't correctly classified when the company spent 25 million on additions. So almost 10% of their additions were incorrectly classified. So this is, this is significant, although it's less damaging to us as investors than some of the other disclosures. But you know, we're relying on the auditors to do a good job. And this really isn't acceptable. And the FRC makes extensive reference to the nature of reconciling items which the auditor didn't investigate properly. And I love this comment. Certain reconciling items in this audit also call for further investigation and appropriate audit evidence to support them. Examples are items described as cash and re received in relation to sales from traders described as market peat, a payment of £145,700, and brown, B-R-O-W-M, bread, the typo in the, in the name, a payment of £155,000. So 300 grand on one single day just after the year end, which was like a huge proportion of the company, the subsidiary's external sales. And obvious that where you've got like weirdly described um, um, customers, the auditors should look at that market peak. That sounds a bit odd. I better look at that. Brown, brown bread, misspelled. You should look at that. Really, really bad. And although the FRC's report, I mean, naturally focuses on the failure of the specific audit test, the auditor missed a fundamental point in my view. A skilled analyst could assess in 15 minutes that the patisserie Valerie accounts weren't accurate. The margins were simply incredible, too good to be true. They were reporting margins which were higher than the margins that Starbucks makes. And I've got a whole other video that you should look at if you're interested in this subject because I go through how it was obvious and how you could have spotted it. How the auditor didn't spot it, I have no idea. It took me 15 minutes. So the conclusion of all this are it's great that the FRC is holding auditors to account. The fine way too small in my personal opinion the reduced fine is less than the highest paid partners pay. So probably the chief executive got paid more than the company got fined. And the firm's been fined several times in the last few years and it's still receiving a discount. FRC has just published another report on InterServe where they also give a reduced fee. So we as investors need better auditors, better audits and stiffer fines. So I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, please sign up on BehindTheBalanceSheet.com where you can get all sorts of free training material and a great newsletter. And don't also forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel because we've got lots of great videos and I'm here to help you. If you are interested, you want to learn more, feel free, go to the website, look at the investing courses. I've been doing this for three decades. I can really help you improve your investing skills. If you want to find out more, visit the website and feel free to email me. Thank you for watching.